Hey there everyone, so uh, as you can see we've changed scenery, we're outside, we got a microphone, hopefully that works. Um, but today's focus is going to be what's in front of me right here. Um, this is a 3000 microwatt uh, blue CNC and uh, comes from China of course. Um, but it is a, a really nice laser engraver. Um, it is, uh, it has a working area of 65 by 50 centimeters. Um, so as you can see, it's a really big area that you have to work with. Um, and it's uh, not too expensive. Um, you can get this for under $200. Um, you know, range of 150 to 200. Now, if you're like me and you bought this, um, you are going to have some difficulties assembling it. So hopefully this video today will show you how to set it up, um, how I set it up, um, and give you some better documentation than what the actual documentation that follows this CNC laser engraver. So. Uh, yeah, let's uh, get this started. Hey there, it's uh, Tom from the future along with my assistant here. Um, just wanted to make a, a few statements about the video that you're about to watch. Um, due to the size of the project, I figured I would uh, uh, film outside because uh, I don't really have a, a space large enough to show um, the laser engraver. Uh, and I figured the natural light would help out, kind of give some uh, more detail um, to the different pieces. However, um, the audio is kind of messed up uh, as a result. Um, my voice, of course, uh, is not the best uh, due to my treatments, um, but the wind also started picking up um, during the video, and then cicadas decided to join in on the fun. So I tried to eliminate as much as a background noise uh, as possible during the edits, um, but there's still some audio discrepancy there. Um, the second is that um, I am by no means an expert, uh, and I am definitely not an engineer. So you'll hear me say things like, motor, dynamos, gyros, engines, power, nuts and washers, bolts, I'll use the terms wrong, and I acknowledge that. Um, but yeah, sometimes I call a bolt for a nut and a nut for a washer, and a... just just bear with me, okay? Um, even though I don't know the proper verbiage, um, I do hope the video is still useful to you. So that being said, uh, I hope you enjoy it and uh, I will catch you in the next video. Thank you. So as you can uh, see, I've laid everything out for us. Um, it's easy to see. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to go uh, closer and have a little close-up explanation of everything. Um, but basically, these are all the parts that you need in order to build this laser engraver. Um, now, if you've watched the official build video, um, that comes uh, with the instructions, um, you know that there is no explanation as to which part goes where or even how many parts you're supposed to have or anything of the sorts. There are multiple different screws, all different lengths, um, different, uh, I want to say pipes, but uh, different uh, frame lengths. Um, it's it's just a mess. So uh, let me get closer and I will show you each individual piece and we'll explain um, what it is that it's supposed to be doing and then after that we're gonna go and build it. First things uh, first, let's start with the tools needed. Um, the uh, package actually comes with the three hex keys uh, which you will need but um, I would suggest to have a 5 16 inch uh, wrench nearby as well. Uh, it'll help you a lot uh, when it comes to assembly. 
um, because basically you want things to be tight. You don't want it to be too tight, but you also don't want it to be too loose. It'll start to wobble. And when you're engraving, any kind of wobble is going to translate to a really bad engraving. Um, you also need a uh, precision uh, Phillips screwdriver. Uh, if you have one that's magnetic, uh, that would be uh, um, preferable, but not needed. Um, and I recently came across these myself, and I'll leave a link down below for this particular set. It's absolutely amazing. Comes with everything that you would ever need for any kind of console or any repairs. Uh, it has a ton of features. So if you're into basically what I'm into, fixing and repairing and, you know, doing stuff by yourself, this is an absolute must. Um, but you also need a regular Phillips screwdriver uh, for some of the uh, screws uh, later on. So uh, let's start over here. Um, this is the frame. Now, as you can see, there are different lengths and they're different types. You have two singles of the same length. Then you've got two doubles, which are shorter. And then finally, you also got this, uh, which is a longer double frame. And basically, this is for the laser assembly. Um, this is what keeps the laser assembly and then moves, you know, from right to left. Um, actually, from left to right, uh, depending on what kind of engraving you do. But uh, these four, the two shorter and the singles, those are going to make up the actual frame. This is going to be a crossbar across that frame. Um, moving on, we've got the belt. Uh, now, as you can see here, there are three belts and they're again, they're different size. The longest one is going to be on the crossbar and the two shorter ones are going to be on the frames. Um, then you've got the actual laser itself with its little power uh, converter. Um, then you got the power supply. Uh, over there is a USB. And then that's basically the motherboard that controls the whole operations. You've got the three... Uh, not entirely sure what to call those. Um, gyros? Dynamos? Uh, not sure, but they're there. They're the ones that basically move everything up and down, left and right. Um, as you can tell, I am not an engraver. Um, I'm actually a gamer. So this is a little out of my uh, wheelhouse, but still, uh, it is fun to play with. Uh, then you've got the frame pieces, uh, some acrylic. Uh, basically, they come with a, producti uh, a protective uh, film and a color fill. If you don't know that like I did, then you're gonna tear off the color film uh, like I did with those two. Uh, so you can have it either blue or just clear see-through. Comes with the laser uh, glasses, which you do need to use because the laser that comes out is uh, a blue laser and it's really uh, damaging to your eyes. Then it comes with the instructions, which are absolutely completely useless. Um, like to show you here, like this is from the actual, you know, it's all Chinese. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that's that. Um, and it doesn't have any build instructions. It's basically just telling you how to use the software. Speaking of, you also have this little disc that comes with it. Um, that has the, uh, uh, well, to be honest, not a whole lot on it. <laughs> um, it basically has a few uh, files uh, which tells you to go to YouTube, watch a tutorial video that is absolutely useless, uh, just fast forwards everything, doesn't explain anything and leave you hanging. Uh, especially on the laser assembly, it does not show you how to actually do the laser assembly. Uh, moving on, you got the screws, the wheels, uh, and basically the parts. Um, there are 15 wheels in total that you're going to be using. Four angle brackets for the frame. Then um, you're going to have 16 of these bolts. Uh, they have a little thicker head than the others, 
And, but basically what these are, are for the legs. So the legs would be these parts here. So each one is going to get a, a screw. Um, so that's basically where you're going to be using uh, those. Uh, now going down here, you have a mid sized. Uh, those are going to be used for the most part um, with the uh, um, wheels over there and one of those gyros things. Um, and then finally you have these five. Now these are for the actual laser. So again, it's going to use the wheels, but it's going to be attached to the laser and then to the frame, those triangular ones over there. Um, moving on, you got these spacers. Now, they're two different sizes. Actually, there's three. There's some extra ones there, but um, the ones you're going to be using are the longest ones. You're going to be using five of those. And again, that's going to be for the laser. So the longest screws are going to get the longest spacers. Uh, these uh, are basically for the others. So it'll be for all three assemblies. Uh, the laser is actually going to get one uh, of the long ones and one of the short ones. That's why there's 15 here and five here. Um, moving on, you got the uh, bolts. Now there's going to be 29 of these bolts. And if you're lucky, like I am, you have four of these little wing bolts. Uh, that are going to be used to basically attach uh, the power for the laser and the uh, motherboard over there. So if, however, you're unlucky, you're going to have to use four of these instead. The thread is the same. Uh, these are just a lot easier to work with, but I'll cover that when we get to that part in the setup. Um, then you got the screws themselves. Um, you are going to have 10 uh, of the large screws uh, with a large head. Then you're going to have 8 of little hex screws. So you're going to have uh, basically a hex head. Um, and then, of course, there's going to be 12 of these shorter ones uh, with a small head. Now, these are for attaching these fellows. So they'll be screwed in right here. So all three of those are going to need three of uh, four of these, which is why there's 12. And then finally, you're going to need two of these. These are a lot shorter. Uh, if we put them next to each other, you can kind of see there that these are shorter. And that is what connects the actual laser to its frame. And then, just to make matters worse, since the tutorial doesn't show you, like the official build video, doesn't show you anything at all. These are all the parts that I was left over with that have no home whatsoever. Um, in particular, this guy, which is a much larger thread, much larger screw. It has a hex uh, bolt that goes with it. And again, there's no, no explanation as to why. Uh, there's a couple of extra screws, digit, and these things which play no part whatsoever. And it's just a mess. So um, hopefully by, by doing this for you, it helps you to visualize, uh, put everything out for yourself, um, and get ready for the actual build. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Um, I'm going to be working from the side. Uh, hopefully that'll make it a little easier for you to follow along which pieces I'm using and so on. Uh, but basically the first thing we need to do is build a frame. So we're going to start by taking these angles. So four sets of these, uh, leaving two left over on the side there. Uh, we're also going to need eight of the hex bolts. So 
So there we go. Um, and we're gonna need the bigger screwdriver. Now, in order to make this easy, what we wanna do is uh, put these in first and then attach the bolt barely. Uh, you want it to, um, you want the bolt not to go through the nut, uh, but basically just to hold it on there. And just like that. So basically, So now that we have these four prepped, uh, we're gonna take one of the doubles and one of the singles. Uh, the shorter double, not the, the long one there. And what we wanna do is we basically wanna slide this just into that groove. Uh, you can see right there, just slide that in. And then we're going to slide this one on top of there so just like that and we want the the double one to be the extended we don't want this we don't want the single to overlap we want the double to overlap like that uh, and then we screw those together and this can be a little finicky but basically just do it one time uh, side at the time and try to keep it in the corner and then now that we have that we can push this a little actually we need to loosen it up just a little bit there we go and then we're gonna tighten that Just like that. So what you end up with is a corner just like that where the single is touching the double and the double is overlapping the single. So we're gonna do that on all four sides. Now, before we attach the last one, I just wanna give a little warning here uh, because it seems like the sets that these guys send out are, they vary from person to person. So if you do not have these guys, these little wing nut dudes, if you don't have these and you have to use these, uh, the actual nuts, then at this time, before you attach the last side, you want to decide whether this or the other one is the front uh, or back because you're going to be attaching the motor and the uh, brain to the back side of this unit. And once you've attached this, you're shutting off access to these areas. So if you need to use one of these, then you need to insert those uh, into these little grooves before you continue. And you are going to need four of them, uh, just like these. Um, these are nice because they basically just slip right in. So you can, you get access to these even after you've assembled everything. Um, but if you need to use the nuts, then you put those in now. Decide which of these is the front and back and put four of these in the back channel uh, facing away. Okay, so now that we have the frame put together, next part is going to be the belts. Um, we're gonna use the two that are the shortest. So we're gonna take those and we are going to put them in the side channels right here. And you want the teeth to go down, facing into the groove. And uh, the reason why you want the teeth to go downwards is 
when you're we're assembling the motors, uh, basically it's going to look like this. So there's going to be a little V and the motor is going to run on the grooves inside of that loop. So that's why we have the teeth oriented downwards. Now this next part is not my favorite, let's just put it that way. Uh, we're going to take two of the nuts and also two of those hex uh, bolts right here. So those uh, we're going to be using to anchor these down. I'm going to go on that side and anchor them. Now, I'm not going to lie, anchoring these is absolutely horrible. Uh, there's no better way to say. Um, it's a pain in the butt, to be absolutely frank. Um, what we want to do though is push this uh, a little bit. You want to leave maybe one and a half inch about five centimeters or so um, sticking out then you're gonna take the nut and you're gonna feed it into this channel and it's almost impossible to get it in helps to wiggle a little bit. There we go. Oh god. Um, actually, I think that might be too much overlap here. So what I'm going to do is just pull on this while trying to keep this in place and hoping not to tear There we go. Perfect. Now that you have that, you take the screw and you secure it. And you don't want the belt to turn uh, or twist. Uh, so there we go. Now uh, we're going to attach it to the other side as well. So uh, that's all we're going to do with the frame for the time being. But let me show you here. So basically what we're ending up with is a little bit sticking out and then the belt secured by the bolt. Uh, and then on the other side, these uh, are just loose. So. As you can see here, they're not attached at all uh, because we're going to be sliding in the assembly, which is the next part. So we'll put this here again and then start by assembling the uh, dynamos over there. Now the next part is going to be to assemble the two motors uh, that go on the right and left hand side. So the parts that we need for this are the two side plates, two of the motors, and then eight of those little set screws. Now, one thing to keep in mind with these is that during shipment, these heads might move up and down. They got some set screws at the bottom. Um, you might need to realign these teeth later on because we want them to be level but i will cover that when we get to it just make be aware that you might have to adjust this uh, gear that sticks up now as for these side plates uh, they do have an up and a down so you have to keep that in mind uh, the down is where those two screws are uh, and up is where these five screw holes are. These are going to be the wheels 
that are going to be running along those rails on the frame. So this is up, this is down. Keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to take one of the engines or motors and just slide that through the hole. You can see that these four holes here line up with the screws. And we do want the uh, uh, connection here to be facing down. So. And the screws that I'm using are the ones that are the longest of the thin screws. <laughs> uh, they're not the big ones, uh, but they're not the smallest two. Uh, so it's the one you have uh, 12 of. So we're going to screw this. And again, we do want it to be tight. Uh, we don't want it so tight that, you know, it breaks the acrylic or rips the threads, but we do want this to be as tight as possible. So that's one. We're going to do the same on this one. Now, it doesn't matter if you put it this way or if you put it this way. The only thing that matters is the up and down. Left and right means absolutely nothing. And you should have something that looks like this when uh, you're all done. Next, we're gonna put the wheels on. In order to assemble the wheels, we're gonna need 10 of the wheels and we're gonna need all 10 of the mid-range black screws. Not the longest, not the shortest, but all 10 of these are going to be used. Then we're also going to need 10 of the mid spacers. My set came with some itty bitty ones that are not being used at all. Um, but the longest spacers are for the actual laser that moves side to side. So we're going to use 10 of the small ones. We're also going to use 10 nuts and having this little wrench as well as these two uh, hex keys will make things a lot easier. So in order to assemble this, what we need to do is place one of the black ones through the hole, then put a spacer, then put a wheel, then put the nut. Just like that. And we do want to tighten this because as I said, uh, any movement later on is going to be a wobble and that is going to mean that the laser is not going to be very active. So just like that I feel, yeah I feel that is good enough. Uh, if you have some problems, you can use, you know, the hex key on the back to kind of give you a little bit more leverage. Uh, so now we're just going to do that with all of these. So I'll show you the holes just to make your life a lot easier. So basically these five. Um, so the top five holes are going to be for the wheels. So I'll, uh, I'll jump cut to having the wheels assembled, but it's basically the same. Uh, the bolt, the washer uh, or spacer, uh, the wheel, and then the nut at the top. So at the end you should have something that looks like this with the five wheels on the top. Um, now at this point is when you align the, the top gear right here. So to move in and show you a little better, uh, let's see if that shows over there. You want, and it helps to have this actually, you want the gears to be exactly on the same parallel line as the wheels themselves. So 
If not, then you can loosen these set screws. Um, so there are two set screws, and apparently the wind is picking up here, so let's see. There we go. So as you can see, this moves up and down freely. There you go. There you can see it. So you want that to be perfectly aligned with that wheel base. So out air, I would say in my case. And then it's, it's a little difficult to do this um, so that you can see, but I'm sure you sure you get the gist. So you basically just want that to be aligned and then tighten the screw. So I'm gonna put this down here, make it a little easier for myself. But yeah, just make sure that you get those properly aligned. Just double check this. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, actually, let me tighten these screws because I didn't do that the first time I assembled this because um, I didn't realize just how important that aspect was. So, oh yeah, this screw is completely loose. There we go. So make sure that you tighten those and you're ready for the next step. I had to run after a few things that blew away, but uh, we're back to uh, uh, regular mode right now. Now, I did do one mistake, but it's not, it's not a groundbreaker or a deal breaker, uh, so to say. Uh, remember how I told you that these were down? Uh, those are actually up. So it's supposed to be like this, which means that right now my connection is facing upwards, but actually, come to think of it, that might be better than having it going down. Um, in the official video, uh, they do show them with the connections down, uh, but come to think of it, I actually prefer it like this because the cords will feed up and away instead of down and potentially getting caught in something. So the orientation was wrong, but I actually like this result a lot better. So I'm not going to change it. And I don't want you to either. Now that being said, um, we're going to attach both of these to the frame. So we're just going to lift up the belt and then take the first one, basically just slide it onto these rails. So. There we go. So just feed that in. Then we're gonna take the belt and what I like to do, or what I did rather, was kind of crimp it just a little bit, just to get a little bit of a bend at the end. And then we're gonna feed this in. And by having that little bend, we can grab it from the other side and then make sure that we put it over the wheel uh, or this gear rather and then feed it down here again. So we want this to be tight because uh, again any kind of rattling a movement here is bad. We, we really don't want that. So we want this to be as tight as possible. Um, and we're going to secure this end just like we did the other. So we're going to need a nut. And we're going to need one of these. And of course our little hex wrench over here. Now, as I said, this kind of wanted to be as tight as possible. Um, 
and it can be a real pain getting this to fit perfectly. So let's see here if we could get that in. And sometimes using the wrench as kind of a guide helps. Uh, and then make sure you pull in the, the track so that it is as tight as possible. And then just try to wiggle this nut down so that you can mount it. So let's feel, feel like that's good. So I'm gonna attach that. There we go. Now we're gonna do the same on the other side. So now that we have both the side motors on, uh, we can go ahead and put the legs on. And those are gonna be the four acrylic pieces on the side. So these four right here. We're also going to be needing eight of these smaller black screws. So we've got five and eight. Those are screwed in with the big hex screw. Um, there is no right or wrong. You basically can put them anywhere and any way that you want. But for aesthetic reasons, I prefer to put it this way. So you just lift up the belt so that you can get to it. Take this and just attach it into the frame itself. And then tighten it with the hex. There we go. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing on all four sides. Uh, now that you have the legs on, um, it's up to you if you want to cut these off um, just to make it look uh, a little bit more trimmed, a little bit more neat. Um, I think personally I'm just going to keep these tabs sticking out uh, because if something happens it's easier to work with that belt having more of it. It's easier to pull, uh, easier to put in place, should it break maybe I have enough to salvage it. So I'll just leave these as they are. Um, but that means that the next part is actually going to be uh, setting up for uh, the next, uh, which is basically the crossbar. So because of the size of the video and my incredibly crappy internet out here in the countryside, uh, I decided to break it down into two parts. Uh, makes it easier for me to upload um, and makes for easier viewing. Uh, you don't have to sit through an hour long video. Uh, so both videos will be published at the same time so you can go ahead and go over to part two right away um, and uh, I'll see you there um, and take care. Have a good day.